Once you make it to Auto Sales Master, your path should be pretty smooth. Today, I'm going to talk about how to get there in eight simple steps. First of all, in order to succeed, you must set a goal. In other words, it's MBO, Management by Objective. All of us now have set a balanced life as our goal. After setting this goal, you must chase it. Chase it with determination. You really need to focus your minds. You can't falter and must stand strong in your faith. Your determination must include more than anything, the will to live your life in your way. Some of you here today will be inspired by this lecture and decide to do this business. Some of you will also realize how lucky you are to have finally found Arami. You will start picturing yourself living in your dream house enjoying the lifestyle you have always dreamed of. You imagine yourself buying a fancy car for your husband so that he no longer has to feel embarrassed around his friends and turning him to a brand new man. For your children, you really want to provide them with opportunities to make their dreams come true. You tell your family about your determination. You will say, darling, I'm going to get you a brand new car. Your husband responds, where exactly have you been? He'll think you're being manipulated and you are so gullible that you can't tell right from wrong. Faced with this kind of reaction, you become embarrassed and become disheartened, which should never happen. In other words, you shouldn't let other people steer your life. Instead, you should influence the people around you with your thoughts and ideas. You need to be the center of influence. You must solidify your determination. Are all of you determined? Are you going to be the center of influence? That's the way it should be. To boost your determination, you must have positive thinking. Positive thinking doesn't mean to argue that something impossible is going to happen. Honestly speaking, this world we are living in has all the conditions we need to become rich and successful. Once you start utilizing your given abilities, you can all take off and become successful. I'm telling you that success is waiting for you. Now that you've heard this lecture, all you need to do is open your mouth and talk like this. Why don't we do this Aramie business together and go to the seminar, try out this great and affordable shampoo and toothpaste? Our products sell themselves due to their quality and prices. There's only one reason for failure. You didn't open your mouth and spread the word. The only thing you need to do is talk. The third determination is that you're willing to work very hard. Once a farmer makes a decision of reaping 10 tons of rice, he will be determined to endure the hard work of planting rice in spring, weeding in summer, and harvesting in autumn. Is he willing to endure all that trouble? He definitely is. No farmer would imagine 10 tons of rice yet sit around and do nothing. He wouldn't expect the 10 tons of rice to just walk into the silo. You must be resolute in your determination of going through difficult times. Every now and then, you will run into folks who try to talk to you out of doing this business. Not everyone will be buying things from you. Some people won't. If that's the case, you just disregard them and move on to another person. 
If you just keep talking, talking, and talking, you'll run into totally unexpected people who will buy from you. In some cases, they even refer you to others. Occasionally, you will meet people who are willing to check us out themselves because you fumble with your explanation. They just want to pursue us and later look us up on the internet to ask for more info from better representatives. They often come back to you saying they are greatly impressed. They are even interested in doing the business and have been actively researching it. They are super excited to share their discoveries from the internet with you about him or him, about Carrie, and whatnot. They are so impressed with our products that they can't wait to buy more for themselves. You might run into some who are better informed than you in one of your downlines. As long as you're willing to do the hard work, good consequences are bound to happen. Again, you must be determined to go through hardship. After determination comes the third item, which is to fully take on doing this business. In order to do that, you'll be making a list of the people you will want to approach. I call this step list up. After thinking of who would go to the list, start writing down their names. Do not list the people who might be interested in doing the business. Just put down the people you have met so far. There's a reason for not listing potential contractors. It's because of the law of own mind. The reason some complain about not knowing enough people is because they look only for those that are likely to do this business. All you need to do is list the people that you know and let them know what you're up to. Tell them you're in sales of cosmetics, household goods, and health supplements that are great quality and prices, so they should be buying those goods from you. All you have to do is advertise to people what your business is and spread the word around. However, what these people actually do is prejudge whether their guests are going to make purchases from them or not. To prejudge is a legal term. For example, a judge makes up his mind that the suspect is a thief. After hearing the prosecutor's and the defense attorney's arguments, he will surely hand down a severe sentence. A prejudiced judge will hear the defense attorney's argument as mere lip service for his service charges. That's why I'm telling you not to prejudge. You don't need to list potential contractors but only your acquaintances. Then how many people do we know at all? On average, people have about 250 acquaintances. Why 250 people? An average wedding has about 250 guests. Wouldn't we know all the people who show up at our weddings? We know all of them. You might not be able to recognize them immediately, but with some hints you will recognize who they are. You might not have been in touch with them, but they are either distant relatives, friends, or friends of relatives, and so on. So I'm saying that all you folks here know at least 250 people. Let's classify your acquaintances into hometown pals, elementary school friends, middle school friends, high school friends, and college mates. Next, come up with people in your current neighborhood. Next, list your peers and your former co-workers. For those who did military service, write down your army buddies. If you squeeze your memory a little, you will have at least 250 people on your list. 
The speed at which you inform these 250 acquaintances of yours will determine your success. Among those 250, there will be some who are not interested at all, people who will only be consumers, and people that will join you in business. Look, there are bound to be some people who are desperately looking for something to do, yet are a bit past the prime. Most of them are usually short on cash for new investments or lack special skills that are required to find a new job. Those people are down and out and desperate to make ends meet. You would be surprised to know how many of these folks there really are. This amazing business is exactly what they need. And we can refer it to them. For this business, you don't need special skills nor are you required to make any investments. Since you don't need any to invest a dime, bluntly speaking, you have nothing to lose. You can take on this business with nothing more than a powerful will and everyone will be able to succeed. Tell them quickly about this incredible opportunity. I want you to know how quickly spreading the word makes a big difference. As you already know, one of our foundational principles is speed. Recently, a new concept has been discussed a lot, called speed management in this business administration field. Let me explain what speed really means in this academic perspective. Here are two pipes called A and B. Which pipe has more water flowing through it? It might look as though pipe B has more water flowing. However, if the concept of speed is introduced, then things change. Pipe A pumps out water with a strong force, while pipe B shoots it out with only moderate force. Which one ultimately pumps out the most water? It's possible to move more water through pipe A. From the perspective of business administration, the diameter of the pipe represents facility investment. Despite small facility investment, if the element of speed is introduced, productivity can be increased. That's what speed management is all about. It also leads us to second management. For example, they even compare the price of a cup of coffee to the wage expenses of an employee while taking a break drinking coffee. In an effort to minimize cost, management scholars analyzed speed all the way down to seconds. From my understanding of speed, it always comes hand in hand with the concept of time, as you just saw. What does time mean to you? Everyone, what does time mean to you? Some of you might say, time is money. Many people place great value on time. However, just because time passes, it doesn't guarantee any money. What in actuality is time? Time is simply a series of events, one after another. It is the perspective of events occurring in other words, it's the cognition of events. Therefore, time equals events. As a matter of fact, it's often said that to be on top of your life, you have to be good at managing your time. Being good at time management or life management all boils down to managing events. If that's the case, you will want to take the initiative regarding what events should occur in your life. Doing this business is such a big deal in your life, isn't it? How precious would it be if your family can enjoy a happier life? 
but also helping others succeed along the way. So how are you going to make this precious occurrence a reality to the 250 people? The fact that you're telling them about what you're up to is an event itself. For this to happen, some folks advertised to 250 people in a period of three months. On the other hand, other folks advertised to 10 people each day. They inform 10 people a day for 25 days. It takes them only one month to inform all 250 people. Does this effectively shorten the time taken to advertise? It does. Three months is reduced to one month. In reality, the time has not been reduced, but the frequency of contact increases. In some amazing cases, people have made this happen in 10 days. Some people contact 25 people daily and are thus done with this responsibility completely in a period of just 10 days. Incredibly explosive power can be created in this particular case. When things are compressed like this, they make a big boom. Nothing happens to water, air or oil when they are left alone. They don't do anything. However, if air is pressurized with an air compressor, what happens? From the compressed air comes all kinds of power to motorize machines, pumps, and suction tubes, and can then play very important functions. The same goes for oil too. With hydraulic systems, oil is compressed to generate enough power to lift heavy objects that weigh several hundred tons. Therefore, if you want to achieve something challenging in your life, you should never let it happen on its own pace. Or let yourself get a free ride on it. You're going to select the events you desire, get them organized, and make them happen in an intensive manner. This is how you get to be successful in life. This is why I call this event compressing. Time compression, because time equals events. It's called time compression. Again, you must use your time in a compressed way. After the third step of making a list, you are going to make phone calls. The purpose of phone calls is not to explain about the business, but to make appointments and invitations. When making invitations, it's of critical importance that you are committed to a certain number of phone calls per day and doing it consistently. To my surprise, some folks consider showing up at the center as doing their work. They come to the center in the morning, spend all day chatting, and go home saying they have to fix dinner for family. They hardly made any phone calls or meet with people on any given day. Things don't add up even when days turn into months and they barely made any contacts in the end. Those humdrum people come and go to the center. Hanging out and chatting at the center does not work. What is really considered working is to make phone calls, meet with people and attend meetings. You should be able to tell exactly what hours you spent doing actual work. Wouldn't you want to work day and night if you knew for sure that you would be making over $20,000 a month in two to three years? People actually make that much money because they work themselves to the bone. Why wouldn't you? You're not making enough effort because you don't believe that you can really live your, live your dream life. You doubt the value of hard work. You aren't putting in enough effort. 
Once you get out there, things turn out better than you expect. How so? It's thanks to the principle of multiplication. Our brains are only good at addition and fairly bad at multiplication. One day, I heard Royal Master Jong Su Park saying, President Park, and I'm getting scared of the money I'm making. What? Imagine a weekly 10,000 US dollars getting deposited in your bank account. You put your bank book into the ATM and it keeps going. You haven't had the chance to close your book because you've been so busy. The ATM keeps going and going with your bank book to your amazement. You would wonder, have I really done something to deserve this? How amazing is it to be making this much money? I have made that much money myself. It feels as if the company made a mistake depositing money to my account. I became afraid that they would ask me to return the money. So I hurriedly withdrew the money and deposited it into a different bank. Those things will happen. Many of us didn't believe in our wildest dreams that we could be making $30,000 to $50,000 a month within three years. Still, they followed their faith even though at times they weren't so sure. That's why they became who they are today. They were surprised to see what they believed in coming true. Those who are going to just sit around should just leave. In order for water to boil, the temperature must reach 100 degrees. However, if the temperature hovers around 50, 60 degrees, 70 degrees, 80, 90 degrees, will the water ever come to boil? You bring in a few guests as you feel a little energized, then you get discouraged because three of them quit. Again, you get encouraged seeing some people at the seminar and receiving a little compensation thanks to your downline. As you keep going, then again, people won't just cooperate with you to your dismay. That's why things are not happening for you. The temperature must go over 100 degrees for the water to boil. If you want people around you to burn with passion, you must burn first. Only actively burning wood can make other pieces burn like crazy. You must be fiercely determined to succeed. There's one reason a person would have no passion. They have no love in their heart. Don't you truly wish for your dear wife to become happy? For that, you must be successful. You made phone calls, right? You sent invitations. The fifth step is to explain the business. The first leg of the business explanation is about the company. You're going to talk about the company? What is our company like? Atomy is a distributor of products that are made by Cary and Colmar, which have an over 100-year-old reputation and sells them at incredibly low prices. Always have your knowledge of the company at hand. And remember that we sell prestigious products at affordable prices. Under the strategy of Mastige. That's Aramy in a nutshell. Secondly, you will be talking about our products. You need to talk about our products in an organized fashion. If you can write down and memorize about one minute length explanation on each of our products, cosmetics, toothpaste, and hemohim, it will work the best. Speech can be unfocused and stray off topic. It's best to have everything written down. The explanation doesn't have to be hard. Easily explanation with simple words are most effective. Please have this in mind when organizing your thoughts. Third, we will be talking about our profit structure and compensation plan. You need to tell them about how compensation is paid out. 
Additionally, you're going to introduce our vision for the future. Aramis' vision is to first rule the distribution market, then advance to foreign markets we have opened in the US, then in Japan, Canada, Mexico, and China. We will dominate the world's distribution market. That is the path Atomy is now heading down. The ground for its plausibility is that we sell good things at low prices. That's the vision of the company. Next up is the sixth step. After the business explanation, you need to cover what comes next. You will cover follow-up and follow-through. Follow-up is to make a phone call within 48 hours of a meeting to check up on that person. You have made sales after which the buyer might have some complaints about the product or they might have some misunderstanding. All it takes is a little attention to solve any problems. Many people are a little biased against our merchandise because we are not a household brand yet. They might be a bit prejudiced against our goods before actually using them. You really need to clear their doubts by calling them quickly and reassuring them. The same practice should be done for the business explanation as well. One person signs up as a member, so you get all excited thinking you will make a big downline. Then you don't hear from that person for a week. And she says, I told my husband about the business. And he's as mad as, as, as he can be. I'm sorry, but I can't get involved. This is why you don't want to leave things alone for a week. It can be really hard to fix things later. However, if you approach it within 48 hours, she might say, I'm upset because my husband gave me a hard time. At that moment, there's hope for a dialogue. After one week or 10 days later, people usually forget all about it and move on. You should be saying along these lines to a person who was discouraged but still wants to do this business. Your husband is nearing retirement. Don't you need to be prepared for it? Why don't you ask your husband what his plans after retirement is and if he can still bring home a paycheck? Tell him that's why you are trying to take on this business. Then coach her to have another talk with her husband. So she asks her husband about her, his retirement plan, which he doesn't have. Then she comes back to you saying, her husband is no longer against it. Then comes your ripe opportunity to have her tag along with you. Again, you want to do this follow-up and checking within the first 48 hours. Then what is follow-through? It means you will take care of the members you recruited until they become successful. In most cases, many people leave their consumers alone until they finish using the product. Even if that consumer of yours shows some brisk activity, you are too busy taking care of your smaller leg to be very interested in her. This is why your business is not really taking off. You shouldn't really care about bigger or smaller legs in true, and truly wish for your partner's success more than your own. You must understand that their success is more important than yours. To sum up, once you greet someone, you must take care of that person all the way to success by following through. The next step is the seventh, which is counseling. You're going to do counseling. The thing about counseling is that we do it when problems arise. Let me go into detail on the problems you might face during business. First, some people say, I don't know anyone. 
This is a common thing to say, right? Some even ask me to refer people to them, saying that they hardly know anyone. Those people say they don't know anyone because they don't have a list of people. The list is not of future contractors, but of your acquaintances. We all know at least 250 people you should counsel these folks who say they don't know anyone. Ask them these questions. Who comes into your mind first? Who would you like to see succeed more than anyone? Who do you feel most sorry for? Who do you think will excel in this business after starting? Then they will name that person John Doe and you will write that name down. You ask for his phone number, which they will probably give you. Write it down. Ask for his age and ask what his personality is like. Keep asking about his background, jobs, hometown, and whatnot. Answers will easily follow. After the counseling, decide which option would be most effective for Mr. Doe. Delivering products or explaining about the compensation plan. Would he be more interested in our products or in making his livelihood? They might say John Doe won't be interested in doing business but will love our products because he's quite well off. Then you say, let's go with our products then, or they might say that John Doe is struggling and looking for new work and isn't interested in the goods. He'd definitely be interested in the compensation plan. So we'd better go with their business pitch. Then you say it to them, would you like to meet with him together? Or would you better have a talk with him first? Ask them if it's better to go to his place or have him come to them. As you do counseling like this, they will answer all of your questions. Then you and your partners create a file or counseling log on John Doe. By doing this, you're taking care of every individual on your partner's contact list in an organized fashion. Keep writing down what has been said between you and your partners. If one of your partners says he hardly knows anyone, start asking about every single person he knows and do counseling on each of them. In other words, you will help dig up his connections. Digging up connections. Everyone repeat after me. Digging up connections. You're going to dig up your partner's people. By the same principle, if you ask your sponsors for prospects, they either have given out all the people they can think of, or they truly don't know anyone else. Your sponsors couldn't possibly have any leftover prospects, so it's of no use to cry over the empty coffer. Your sponsors are usually limited sources. However, if you dig through your partner's contacts, dig through their people's people, dig through their people's surroundings, and keep tunneling down infinitely until you fill an entire notebook. You can help your partners learn to take care of his connections. This is how you can keep digging up more people. The second most common problem is that they know many people, but no one would register as members. This is because your partners aren't excited about the company's vision themselves, so they don't bother with the business explanation. Next case is that people do register, but there's hardly any sales. The most common reason for no sales is that you are not repeat consumers yourself. When advertising our products, we talk not only about technical data, but also the great experience of using them. Most of you get your tongue twisted 
because you're mainly focused on the merchandise technical aspects. You don't need to go technical in the beginning. Say, I tried this for its amazing reviews and guess what, it's really amazing. You should give it a try, this stuff is really amazing. That's enough to invoke a reaction, for real? Is it really good? I've got to try it out. Once you have experienced the quality of the products, you can move other people's hearts too. Let's take the example of Hemohim. Let's assume you are a consistent user of the product. You used to feel so tired and groggy in the morning getting out of bed. After taking it for a while, you stop feeling tired and begin to feel energized despite sleeping less. You no longer suffer from frequent colds thanks to your boosted immune system. Therefore, you decide to take it for the rest of your life. If you are so moved by Hemohim, how would you talk to others about it? All you need to do is share your experience, truthfully and vividly with them. That alone would be an effective advertisement. However, some folks just show the boxes to people and ramble off nonsense explanations. Naturally, people aren't moved by you and can't make up their minds about the product. When explaining products, emphasize their best features and sell the good results with your heartfelt passion. People are basically buying those results. In conclusion, you must be a steady user yourself if you want to see people buying from you. Next is when your organization is not getting bigger. Despite member registrations and sales, there are two reasons for that. One is that you don't let them join in the system. You do the business on your own without having to do the seminars. You must be involved with the seminars to develop your organization. It's the same principle as magnets. When a strong magnet is closed, lots of nails will stick to it. Still, nails will fall off the bottom of it. A weak magnet will attract only a few nails. What I'm trying to say is that people with great power like the strong magnet will succeed and people with weak power will not. Nevertheless, 100% of folks with little power can still be incredibly successful thanks to the system. Let's assume this is a large magnetic board. Let's try and stick this one on here. Sticking on it means you become a consumer due to quality and prices. Does it stick? Determined in this way will ensure that your people will succeed. You bring a number of different people to the seminars and some of them are inspired by the speaker and decide to use our products. Others are impressed and want to share with others. So they bring along other people to seminars. This person comes to the seminar and that person comes along too. You don't need to take care of them yourselves. Just bring them to the seminar. It doesn't matter if they are close to you or far from you. Where do they all turn up? All of them would wind up sitting at the seminar. You all stuck at the seminar like magnets. However, all the people are connected in the computer system. Hence, hence, even if they appear to be only sitting at the seminar, all of your compensation comes to you. That's how the system works. Even if you are a weak magnet, you just hang in there. Keep using the products, tell people what a great value our products are, and that this business is worthwhile. As long as you consistently keep spreading the word, even if you can't maintain a big organization, can't take care of an accounting system, can't manage a delivery system, and can't be on top of a computer system, all of you can still succeed in our system. You just need to be a repeat consumer and advertise to your acquaintances. The people below you and the people below them will do the same. This way, all the people with few abilities can gather and become successful through this amazing system of ours.
If you can get these people involved in our system, your organization will become big. There can be another reason why your network doesn't grow. Some are very pretty people who don't get along with others. So newcomers don't feel welcome and leave. They don't know what they're doing. It's too bad because they don't have to do anything but be themselves. This business will only grow as big as your heart. Another reason for not being able to grow your network is being small-minded. What makes these people small-minded is that they think they're better than others. The key to this business is to serve others with humility. Santa hats shouldn't have a domineering attitude, but should worry about how to better serve visitors with a humble attitude. That's what Santa hats and sponsors should do. When telling you things like this, I hear, our Santa hat doesn't serve in humility. I hear some people tattle on their Santa hats. You shouldn't really worry about Santa hats. If your Santa hat doesn't serve, you should. In essence, worry only about what you're doing. You should have a service-focused mind, because pride will get you nowhere. This network marketing business is meant to make you money, not to earn you vain glory. The goal for this business is not for celebrity or titles. Oddly, some join here to seek a title. Those unwise people try to climb the mastership ladder by betting. You shouldn't focus on only making money. Just focus on expanding your group of consumers, and that will bring in bigger sales month after month. Fools charge their own credit cards to rise in ranks so that they can show off their titles on their business cards. Some are foolishly competitive with others and can't even maintain their own masterships for long. These are usually very small-minded people. Small-mindedness comes from an attitude of wanting to be higher than others. You must lower yourself. You must serve others with humility. Look at me standing on this high pedestal so that you can see me well. I'm actually serving you with all my heart, am I not? Generally, CEOs don't spend hours speaking into a microphone. They just want to look lofty and stylish without sweating too much. They usually read a short note of well wishes to the employees and leave the stage quickly. Why do I come up to the stage and give lectures for hours? It's because people tell me I'm better at giving lectures. than anyone else, and by doing so, I can portray trust and reliability for the company. So I take that responsibility gladly, and don't ever think twice about it as my duty. You must somehow get rid of that foolish ego that wants to be better than others. Pride gets you nowhere. Throw that pride of yours to a dog. Dogs couldn't care less. Don't proud people make you feel uncomfortable? They do. They're overly sensitive and get defensive easily. I was surprised to learn that women actually crave power. They sure get jealous and competitive. I'm not saying men don't, of course. Please, you must let go of your ego. You shouldn't mind doing hard chores at the center or being service to others. That's the person you need to be. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, says the Bible, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. If you ever see neighbors picking up trash, 
tidying up the neighborhood and giving helping hands, would you look down on them or admire them? You would be impressed and humbled, right? We would actually exalt them. Again, you should really lower yourself. It's best if you just let go of your ego completely. Please don't get upset with whatever people say about you. Be willing to let them walk all over you, if that is what gives them pleasure. You shouldn't mind lowering yourself in this way. You should embrace taking losses. Don't be afraid of losing money. You will be more resistant to loss this way. Why do we get upset? Because we just don't like suffering losses. Those who say they never suffer a loss because they are smart are usually ill-spirited people. Those folks make others feel very uneasy. Please let others have their way. How would you feel if you were surrounded by people who let you have your way? You would feel at ease. If others are so big-minded that they don't mind taking losses and letting you have your way, you would want to be just like them too. So I'm telling you to take the initiative. It's best to anticipate some losses in your life. For example, when buying things, you make bad purchases 10 or 20% of the time. You just can't make perfect decisions every time you shop. It would be too troublesome to do perfect research for the best products with the best prices. We do make mistakes by not being so smart and buying the wrong items. Still, you should have the kind of laid-back attitude that it's okay to be wrong occasionally and that you can live with those losses. Let's say you bought a dress and you didn't like it. Don't let your mistake bother you so much. Tell yourself it's okay to mess up on occasion. However, if you get upset every time you put on that dress, whose loss is it really? It's just yours. Again, learn to get used to suffering some losses. Let me emphasize it again. Does being small-minded get you anywhere? Once you accept all the possible losses, only benefits will remain for you. Don't even think about racing against your partners. Consider this situation. A very clever person has all the reasons to be righteous with his partners. He confronts a troubled partner with his head and convinced him that he was wrong. The other party acknowledges his mistakes, but he is nowhere to be found since that incident. So he won the argument, but his partner is now gone. Is that really a win? You lost. You shouldn't worry so much about being right. People will often argue nonsense and be completely unreasonable with you. You can prove them wrong, but you should let them have their way. Instead, those people then feel good about their victory and stick around. In the meantime, your sales rise and your business flourishes. Who winds up succeeding? You win. You succeeded. That's why you want to be a big person. Be big-minded and don't prove your partners wrong. Let them have their way. Finally, let's talk about the eighth step. I'll be elaborating on duplication. Duplication is different from copying. Duplication is like cloning, as with the cloned sheep Dolly. We don't call the sheep a copycat. Then how can we tell duplication from copying? Why don't I give you a simple explanation? Here's a tree. If you create the exact same shape with plastic, it's called a copy. This plastic tree should be considered copied. Then how can we duplicate this tree? You take a seed from its fruit and plant it into the ground. The sprouts will bud and leaves will come out. The plant then grows and grows to be just like its parent. This is what duplication is. Let me tell you what foolish people try to copy. They look at the fancy royal masters and long to be like them. 
They are full of envy and can't wait to copy them. People think riding in the luxurious car, dining in fancy restaurants, and sporting designer clothes gives them an advantage in recruiting. They believe a fat wallet, a fancy car, an expensive wardrobe, and flamboyant business style would suit them just right. They even borrow money to do that. Don't. I'll tell you how to really duplicate. Do exactly like Royal Master Jong Soo Park did when she started out. Of course, she did not start out like that. She was poor. She struggled with doing business, expanding her network. I encouraged her to keep it up by reminding her of our good margin ratio. I saw her getting out there and worked so hard. While her peers went up to Diamond Master and Sharon Rose Master, she barely hung on her auto sales master. She managed to sell enough to maintain her mastership and was slowly climbing the ladder. She quietly worked hard for over a year and a half. One day, I kind of teased her naive way of doing business. Saying she believed everything I said too literally. I coached her to pay more attention to her organization and to invite users to seminars so they might be interested in becoming contractors. Is that all? Why didn't you tell me sooner? From then on, she invited people to seminars and her network grew. She only knew how to sell things and was busy doing so. However, her hard work and dedication to expanding a large base of consumers had a surprising result. She brought in more contractors than those who were mere focused on maintaining their networks. It took her longer to become Shan Rose Master and Star Master, but she was first to become Royal Master. Her solid and large foundation of consumers won the race. Like the slow but steady turtles, she reached Royal Mastership faster than anyone. So what should you be doing if you want to become Royal Master? You need to work on drawing more consumers and doing more sales and have this mindset that you're going to turn all of your con acquaintances into consumers. Focus on generating more consumers and one day you'll realize that a hundred consumers are a lot easier to make than one contractor. Contractors might get overwhelmed by the inventory as consumers make immediate repurchases upon running out of daily necessities. Imagine not brushing your teeth. Everyone needs to brush their teeth daily. Hundreds of people need to buy from you. Word of mouth spreads around you to reach those. Those toothpaste consumers seemed unrelated at first. But once they are connected, you can make it into auto sales master, thus making two to four thousand dollars a month. People in your downline see you make that much money and become inspired to just like you. So they work hard on attracting more consumers. And soon you are a diamond master making four thousand, ten thousand dollars a month. This is fundamentally how our business works. What I mean by duplication is not for you to copy or try to be like people who are already successful, but to put forth effort as they did three years ago, making up your mind to follow in their footsteps. That's what I mean with duplication. Therefore, for good duplication, the original version must also be good. Only good original copies yield good duplicates. If you ever think, I think my partners are not like me. There's something really wrong, isn't there? On the other hand, if your partners are trying to duplicate you by going to places, being repeat consumers and inviting people to the seminars, you're sure to be successful, I guarantee it. However, if you don't see yourself as a good example to your partners and fear you might go down big time, what should you do? You must change the original version of yourself. You are the original. Originals get duplicated as you must change your actions in order to change your surroundings. Finally, 
you just finished hearing about the eight steps to success. As long as you follow those guidelines while doing your business, anyone and everyone here can get up to Auto Sales Master. All of you can generate a network of 2.5 million PVs on a bi-monthly basis. Plus, if some of those under you keep working, their sales and yours get combined and you will be able to maintain your Auto Sales Mastership. It is my true heartfelt wish that all of you here get to live your life with hope through Aramie. That's all folks. Thank you for listening.